I'm going to invite you to join me in a unusual text, Numbers chapter 11, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers chapter 11. We're going to read uh, two passages that are connected together. Numbers chapter 11. I was uh, thinking about this text. Some parts of the book of Numbers are about as exciting as reading the phone book. Now, for those of you who are less than 30 years of age, a phone book is a book of all of the (laughs) names and addresses and phone numbers of people in the community. Before we had Google, that's how we looked up people's phone numbers, is with the phone book, okay? Some parts of the book of Numbers are like reading the phone book. Now, I'm saying that it's not exciting reading. It's important. It's just not exciting. The phone book is important, it's just not exciting. But this part of Numbers, I think it has something to say to us this morning. This is one of the reasons why you need to pay attention to Brother Tim when he says, read the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation, because if you don't read the whole part, even the unexciting parts, you miss little gems like the one that's found in Numbers chapter 11. You really do need to read the whole thing, cover to cover, even the unexciting parts, so you can get the important part. So this story that we're about to get to here in just a moment talks about church leadership. Church leadership is hard. That's not a complaint. It's just a reality. It's not easy leading a church. Many responsibilities, many priorities. In this passage, Moses says, I have 600,000 bosses, every man in the camp, and they all know I could do better. Some days I know how he feels, and sometimes the 600,000 are right. Church leadership is hard, and church leaders need help. That's why we have a staff. I wasn't kidding when I said thank you to the staff during the announcements during the time that Levon and I were out in Waco. They carry things along. I have been out a lot lately, and the staff here in Caldwell has carried a lot of responsibility that you don't even know about. I am grateful for our staff. Those that you see on Sunday morning, like the worship staff, Brother Tim, those that you don't see. Church leaders need help. That's why we're electing new deacons in a couple of three weeks. We recognize that not all of the leadership of a church is on staff or paid. There are important lay leaders, and that's why we're electing new deacons. Church leaders need help, and that's why we have teams, committees, coordinating groups, all of those various groups in the church that help us with stuff. My goodness, the list goes on. This is why we have a VBS leader and all the host of workers that VBS leader will enlist. Ms. Shayla Fry. We have all of these things, all of these people. And what we're talking about in this text in Numbers chapter 11 relates directly to the topic of leadership. But before we read our text, I want to visit with you briefly about the Holy Spirit and how his work among God's people was different in the Old Testament 
than it is in the New Testament. The role of the Holy Spirit is different. It's the same Spirit, still part of the triune God, the celebration of the Trinity, but different roles. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit rested on some people, some of the time, for certain purposes. God's Spirit came upon Solomon to give him wisdom to lead and rule the people of Israel. God's Spirit came upon Elijah with power, and he defeated the prophets of Baal. In our text today, God's Spirit comes on a group of people to help Moses with the work of governance of the people. But he didn't come to stay. He came for a time and for a purpose, and then he left. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit abides in all believers all of the time for many purposes. One of the gifts of God to us is when we trust Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he imparts, he implants he embeds the Holy Spirit to live and abide inside of us, a great treasure, a great strength. He pours His Spirit out on all believers. That's the difference. I'm going to make some applications from how the Spirit worked in the Old Testament this morning to how He works in the New Testament. So in our story this morning, the setting goes like this. God's people are traveling from Egypt to their new home that we sometimes call the Promised Land. It's a very large group. Our text talks about 600,000 men, not counting women and children. Now, this is a large group. They're traveling through a place that was very desolate, it was a long journey, and God provided food for them to eat. He provided manna from heaven every single day. Now, I don't know how you felt about school lunches when you were in school. My mother is staying in a nursing home right now, recovering from an injury, and I know how she feels about nursing home food. I, far be it from me to say that manna was a problem. I'd love to taste it. I understand it was a wonderful thing. But the people, all 600,000, got to wanting something different. And so they got cranky. This whole chapter is about that experience of the people of God crying out for something different than manna, and God gives it to them but like a rose with a thorn, it comes at a high, high price. And so, let's read our text. We're not going to get the whole story. We're focusing on these two guys, Eldad and Medad. That's who we're focusing on. But our text starts in Numbers chapter 11, verse 16. The Lord said to Moses, Bring me 70 of Israel's leaders, or elders, who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take of the Spirit that is on you and put the Spirit on them. They will help you carry the burden of the people so that you will not have to carry it alone. Verse 24, so Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him, and he took of the spirit that was on him and put the spirit on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Eldad 
and Medad had remained in the camp. They were not among the elders, but, or they were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Brother Phil, would you please come to the front, sir, and ask a blessing on the reading of God's will, of God's word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Just pray, Lord, you speak through Brother Steve this morning. Just give him words, open our ears, open our hearts to receive your word, to understand it. Help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit that we, and for him to speak to us this morning. And just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Hitchcock. Thank you. Eldad and Medad. So you, you get the flow of the, spirit of the story, don't you? God gives Moses 70 assistants, the elder. And God says, I will put some of the spirit that's on you, Moses, on them, so that they can help you carry the burden of being responsible for all these people. So God comes down to the tents of meeting and he divides the spirit, some of which, uh, the spirit that had been on Moses, he gives some of the same spirit to the 70 elders, and they prophesy an outward sign that the spirit was upon them, and then they help lead the people. Except for Eldad and Medad. Eldad and Medad don't come to the tent of meeting. They stay in the camp. Now, the only two times these guys are listed in the Scripture is right here. To me, that always means something. The host of people talked about in the Bible, are never named. I mean, we're, we're told there are 600,000 men in the camp. They are not listed out for us, okay? But Eldad and Medad, we know their names. For some reason, Eldad and Medad didn't come to where they were supposed to be. I don't know if they were mad about the manna too and decided they just wouldn't go. I don't know if their families were sick. Maybe they had other responsibilities to do that day. We're not told why they weren't there. But I have a feeling that someone called a Edad or excuse me, Eldad and Medad aside later and said, Gentlemen, when Moses says come to the tent of meeting, you'd better be there or we're going to have a talking to later. I've just got a feeling someone straightened that out with Eldad and Medad after all this happened. So when the Spirit fell on these 70 elders and they began to prophesy this outward sign of the presence of God's Spirit, the same thing happens to Eldad and Medad in the camp, and somebody notices. And so a young man, he lights out for the tent of meeting. He gets there and he tells Moses, 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 there are two guys in the camp doing the same thing your elders are doing right here. And Joshua, who was sort of the assistant to Moses, says, Moses, make them stop. He was jealous. 
he was jealous not for himself, but for his leader. He thought these rebellious two guys were taking away from the authority of Moses. And I have to love how Moses replies. I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and the Lord would put his spirit on them. Moses says, you mean there are just two guys with the spirit on them? How easy my life would be if the spirit were on 600,000. I'm glad they're prophesying. I'm glad their spirit is upon, God's spirit is upon them. Every once in a while, either a little sheepishly or I guess unwittingly, someone will come to me and tell me of a great sermon they heard someone else preach either in person or TV or podcast. That's super. Sometimes someone will come to me and they'll talk about some other pastor in town who's done something well. I'd like to think I'm big enough not to be offended by God blessing someone else in some other church. More power to them. I'm not in competition with the other pastors in town. We're not in competition with the other churches in town. If God is pouring out his spirit on the Methodists or on the Lutherans or on another Baptist church here in town, amen. Let it roll. Moses says, I wish all the Lord's people were prophets. And the Lord would put his spirit on them. Can you guess where this is going? Joel, the prophet, picked up on this word of Moses. And God spoke through Joel, the prophet, to say afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in these days. And on the day of Pentecost, when Peter stood up to preach to those who gathered on that miraculous day, he referred back to Joel and he said, what you see today is the fulfillment of what Joel the prophet promised. The Spirit of God poured out on all flesh. When we trust Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God pours His Holy Spirit out on us. He fills us with that spirit. We get all of it we're ever going to get. We have everything we need available to us. There may well be a question of how much the spirit has of us, but there's no question about how much we have of the spirit. Poured out on every single believer. So, what does this mean for us this morning? What life lessons can we learn from Numbers chapter 11 and Eldad and Medad? First, church leadership is shared. It's a burden too big for any one person. It was never intended for any one person. We Share leadership. Second, church leaders should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Administrative skills can only take you so far. People skills, interpersonal skills can only take you so far. Church leaders, pastor down should be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Otherwise, we're just like, I don't know, any other good civic organization in our community. City council. Now, I just went right out of my head because I'm not a member. Tim, you're a member of the Lions. That's it. Great organization. We're different because the Holy Spirit rests on us. Third, good leaders aren't jealous when someone else is blessed with the Spirit. Now, sometimes I'm sure I am jealous, but I ought not be, all right? I've heard great things about Pat Knowlton last Sunday. God bless him, we'll have him back, okay? But let's come back to Eldad and Medad. These two guys whose names are mentioned in this text, who are they? Well, you are. You are Eldad and Medad. That's not exactly true. Assuming that you're a disciple, a Christ follower, someone who has genuinely repented of sins, asked Jesus to forgive you and placed your faith in him, and you're seeking to make him the Lord, the leader of your life, then yes, you are Eldad and Medad. Because God has chosen you to be a part of the body of Christ. He has selected you for service in a way no one else in this fellowship can. By the way, here's a plug for church membership. Everybody has a church home. To put it more biblically, spiritually, everyone has a place in the body of Christ where God has asked them to serve. I can't tell you it's First Baptist Caldwell. I can just tell you, somewhere in the driving distance of where you live is a place where God wants you to exercise those gifts of the Holy Spirit that he's given you. You've been selected by God to serve. And to do so filled with the Spirit. To do so as the godliest men and women you can possibly be. Humbly, sincere, sincerely, prayerfully, submissively, just as full of the Holy Spirit as you can possibly be. Folks, being filled with the Spirit is not rocket science. You don't have to come to, to come to some special meeting and suddenly God's just going to whammo, make you fill with the Spirit. Prayer, Bible study, worship, stewardship, sharing your faith, being God's people is the filling of God's Spirit. We need Eldad and Medad, whether they come to the tent of the meeting or they stay in the congregation, we need them to be filled with the Spirit. We need them to exercise their gifts. We need their part in the body of Christ. Stand with me, please.